everybody. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. I'm going to cover last Tuesday's rp.com bracelet project. That way you can remake it with me. And then I will also post all the links so you can go buy all the products and recreate the bracelet for yourself. Let's get crafting. Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm gonna to be featuring how to make this bracelet and I will post all of the links to purchase the items on the video as well. Um, this was featured in my artbeads.com class last Tuesday and I thought what I would start doing is when I do a project for them on Tuesdays, I'll repeat the same project and post it here on my YouTube channel. That way you can have a little bit more flexibility for pausing and rewinding. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up close. This features a check glass button and it has a really pretty teal translucent color with gold. And these buttons are each individually handmade. They're pressed, they're check glass, they're hand painted with usually 24 karat gold on the top. And the silver buttons are made with platinum. And it's really neat because they really, uh, they have the details and the paint around the edges and they're beautiful buttons and they're each one hand painted. Uh, as well as the second strand, I'm using fire polish, some turquoise and some gold pip beads. And then the first strand, I'm doing a mixture of Amazonite stone and check glass with some daisy spacer beads. The reason why I do a two strand like this with the leather is because it gives it a little bit more of a, a of like a fun multi strand vibe, but it's not as heavy and it doesn't overpower the simplicity of the clasp. You know, because of the size of the button, you don't want to have too many chunky strands that will take away from it. And also it will weigh down the clasp and probably make it just a little bit more difficult to wear. So I thought it would be nice to just have more of a simple, smaller strand along with a more chunky strand and also all the colors balance each other out to coordinate with the button. And I also have a separate YouTube video on how to tie this uh, leather cording design uh, if you wanted to check that out and as well as wire wrapping ball head pins, but I'll briefly cover those in this video today. So again, I'm just doing a leather button closure with two strand bracelet. And all of these items are available at artbeats.com. So the first thing I do is I cut two strands of wire. I'm using Beetle on 49 wire, uh, 0.18. I'll also be using uh, one millimeter crimps and uh, three millimeter bronze crimp covers and wire guards. Um, I love wire guards. I use them because they protect your wire. They make it more flexible to rotate on a jump ring and it doesn't wear down the wire itself and it prolongs the life of your bracelet. <clears throat> So I, I really like to use wire guards, wire protectors, depending on where you purchase them from, that's what they're called. I'll also be using three millimeter bronze wire, I'm sorry, crimp covers. And again, the number one crimp from Beetalon. So how I crimp is I add my crimp first. I slide the wire through the wire guard on one side, up and around and back through the other side. And you wanna make sure your wire nestles in the groove of the top part of the wire guard and back through the crimp like so. And I'm going to pull my wire down straight and you'll see how it kind of sits in this ridge here of the wire guard. You also want to pinch the ends just a little bit closer together and then pull down your wire again. Now you wanna have a small space between the crimp and the base of the wire guard because when you use your crimping tool you don't want it to smash down the legs of the wire guard you want them to pinch in between uh, if you pinch down the wrong spot it will crack the wire guard and then you'll have to start over again and then you want to pinch down like so one time then you want to rotate it to the side pinch down again and you'll have a nice little hamburger look on your crimp and then you can do a pull test, make sure your wire is on there nice and tight. And then I cut off excess wire 
just down to the base of my wire guard and then I'm going to cover it with my crimp cover. And I like crimp covers because it kind of protects the edges of the crimp as well as I feel like it gives it kind of a nice polished look. Finishes it off just a little bit better so it looks nicer. And then I rotate my crimp cover around in my pliers and just kind of press down until I have the smooth edges and it has a nice rounded look. Put those off to the side. So we're going to go ahead and start with our first strand and I'm using three millimeter turquoise as a spacer bead along with the pip beads and the fire polish glass. The pattern I'm using for this bracelet is I'm starting off with the fire polish glass with a piece of turquoise and this is three millimeter round faceted turquoise and then I'm sandwiching in the turquoise around a pip bead just to kind of give it a little bit of texture and then another fire polish glass. And then I just continue the pattern around the strand like so. So turquoise, pit bead, turquoise, fire polish glass. And then you just repeat this until you finish the length of the strand that you desire. Now to go over length really quickly, and I suppose I should have done that first, you want to measure the length that you'll need of your button, your leather clasp, and then the length of your bracelet itself. Now the leather clasp and the button will be about an inch in length. So if you want a seven and a half inch bracelet, for example, you'll want to bead six and a half inches on your strand of wire. And for this one, again, I'm just going to do the turquoise on each side and then the pit bead and then another piece of fire polish glass. And here's your pattern up close. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I'll be right back. So I finished my strand and I'm gonna go ahead and add a crimp bead again and the wire guard. And then we're going to crimp this strand closed. And how I do crimping closed on a strand with beads kind of depends on the weight and the size of the bead and how heavy the beaded portion is next to me and how much space I need between the wire and the beads. So for example, this will need to have a little bit of a gap between the crimp bead and the bead here. That way the beads can move up as I move this to form a bracelet. So if it's too tight with the crimp, it's going to cause these to kind of buckle up together and then they'll do this when you try to bend as a bracelet. So I just want to tug on my wire enough to bring the crimp closer so I don't have too much of a gap of wire because too much then you'll have a big piece of wire hanging out. And I'm just going to do test run and go, okay, how much do I need to actually do this but have the beads also um, fill up the wire that way I don't have any wire gaps. So I'm just going to pull this a little bit tighter and up like this. And I'm going to use my crimping tool here and I'm going to crimp this crimp bead down like so and trim off my excess wire and then add a crimp cover and then you're done with your first strand. And again just kind of pinch it down like so and we're finished. And the next strand is going to be this pattern of check glass and I have some cream colors with translucent brown colors and teal and mixed in with amazonite stone. <clears throat> and for this one I do uh, the creamy rondelle with the spacer bead, a blue daisy bead, a spacer bead, the translucent with a little bit of a teal in there. Amazonite stone, cream, again, the owl. I try to center the owl into the bracelet so as it's sitting, it's pretty close to the top. Another translucent, another um, blue daisy flower, Amazonite stone, cream color check glass, flower, translucent, and Amazonite stone. And I'll go ahead and be typing, I'll type out this pattern and post it on the video as well so you can copy it. Now when you have this strand completed along with this one, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a nine millimeter jump ring 
and I'm going to bring them together and attach them through my knotted leather piece here. And again, check out my other YouTube tutorial on how to form this knot. It's under, um, it's under there. And the next part I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire wrap five of these drop. These are glass beads. They actually are the same color as the button, which is really nice. They match perfectly. And I chained these together with three millimeter jump rings and I attach it to my bracelet with a six millimeter jump ring. And I'm using a, a heavy gauge jump ring and they do really well. So for this end, I'm going to bring these two bracelet pieces together with the six millimeter jump ring. I'm going to close. And then I'm going to bring another one and I'm going to attach the button to the strands with this, like so. And attach it to the back of the button. And then I'm going to take another six millimeter jump ring and I'm going to attach my dangles. Now I did leave a top three millimeter jump ring here. So that way they have a nice little cascade look. And then I'm going to attach it to the larger jump ring back here where the leather is like so. That way it kind of decorates the larger jump ring. And it also does not get in the way of you closing your bracelet like this around your wrist. And just slide your button through your leather closure. And then your bracelet is finished. Yay! Now, um, how I did these was, I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to wire off them and how I attach them. So, I do different connecting of dangles um, differently on each project. So, like some earrings I do a certain way and some bracelets I do a certain way, depending on how I want these to hang. And these ones, I wanted to kind of be a little bit more of a cluster that comes down. So, I connected these with a three millimeter jump ring together with one by itself at the base like so but they're all together here with the three millimeter jump ring so I have the one in the center and one on each side and then when I connect the other ones I have them join in the center of the three millimeter jump ring with one on each side and I just repeat that with another jump ring connecting at the top and then to the six millimeter, that way it has a little bit of space to kind of hang and dangle. And how I wire up my stones is, let me grab one here. I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece of moonstone. And okay, never mind. Um, here we go, I'll use this one. As I slide my ball head pin through, and you want to use 22 or 24 gauge depending on the size of your bead, like the, the weight and how large it is. And I fold the end of the wire over on the outside of my barrel of my round nose pliers, like so. And then I rotate my round nose pliers up at a diagonal, like so. And I bring my wire back around the outside of the barrel and then I bring it around two or three times. And I bring this part up. And I might go around one more time. And then I cut off excess wire. And then I pinch it closed. And I like to get the end of my wire underneath the previous loops. That way you don't have any exposed wire edges or anything raw. And then just kind of gently pinch it down with my pliers and then there you go so you have two to three coils and the end will be pinched in underneath so it lays nice and flat and then here's your finished project thanks so much for watching my video today i really appreciate it i'll post the links to all the supplies and i look forward to seeing you on myartbeads.com live next tuesday thank you